What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another sentiment analysis application streaming Twitter sentiment into Python and then displaying it using Dash and making up a unique name every time we film a video uh, tutorial series. In this tutorial, what we're going to do is display this sentiment live as it comes in. Um, on the term in this case will be Olympics. What I have here is the uh, the code from the live graphs with dash tutorial. So this is what we were working with before and now all we really need to do is come through and change the X's and Y's and that's basically all we have to do. First of all, we won't need the day queue anymore or actually what well, a deck. Is that what it was called? I can't remember what it is now. I think it's deck is is the proper pronunciation. I already forgot it. Um, anyways, uh, so there's that. Now what we need is we're going to import SQLite 3 and, and then we're going to import pandas as PD. Now inside of our uh, update graph scatter, again, we don't need this to, to make our X and Y we're going to make the X and Y. So we're going to say con equals sqlite3.connect. I can hear some people mumbling in the audience as I do this. Twitter.db. And then we're going to say c equals con.cursor. So to the people mumbling, um, so <laughs> what's happening here is, don't forget, it's an interval and it's happening every one second. And so every one second we're establishing the connection object and then the cursor and all that. Wouldn't it be better, Centex, if we did that up here? Doesn't that make more sense? And it would, except that when you do that, you're going to hit an error because Dash is using threads. So um, if we tried to do this and then access this cursor element, we could access the cursor, but we can't, uh, we can't do the actual operation. Uh, because SQLite does not support uh, doing that. So, so we're not going to get away with it. So instead what we have to do is, is give our connection every time. Uh, at least from what I've found, this hasn't caused any trouble, um, but it does make, make one a little uncomfortable. Uh, there might be a better way, and if you know a better way, uh, let us know, because I, I don't like this. Uh, yeah. But uh, I'm probably not going to keep using SQLite anyways, uh, so maybe it won't be an issue moving forward. But I know that uh, that looks bad. So continuing along, uh, we've got the cursor now. So then what we're going to do is we're going to build out the data frame, and I don't think I want to type it. So what I'm going to do is just copy and paste it. Again, the tutorial is linked anyways. Uh, it's strangely tabbed over further. Then this is tabbed. Is this going to have a try and accept possibly? It is. It is. But for now, um, let me just tab it over and explain it. So uh, because Pandas has a read SQL, um, oh, and in fact, we're not going to make this dynamic yet. So this is even, this is more simple than I thought. So the S, you just basically, with the read SQL, you pass the query, you pass the connection, uh, and you're good to go. So in this case, we're just populating this database. We're going to sort by Unix. You've already seen this. We're going to generate the smooth sentiment and we're going to drop the non, uh, not a numbers. So really nothing fancy, nothing new here uh, that you have not seen yet. So other than that, uh, we need to create the X's and Y's. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say the X, uh, we would say that is df.unix.values. Uh, and we don't want to plot everything, especially if it does go out to 100. So let's just do a slice and say the last, not, let's see, not up to 100, uh, up to the last 100. Is that, no, up to, no. <laughs> okay, I should probably stop very soon making these tutorials. Okay, by the, stop for the day, I mean, not permanently. So X, Y, Okay, so negative 100 onwards. So the last 100 values is what uh, we're going to do for X and Y. And obviously, this shouldn't be .unix. This would be sentiment smooth. Y equals sentiment smooth device. Luckily, I'm going to copy and paste this anyways uh, after this. Uh, okay, so that would be it. Uh, but I am going to encase it and try and accept. And I will explain why in a moment. And actually, we probably should use logging rather than what I'm about to do, but that's okay. So, um, so yeah, I just wrote out here too, uh, popular topics that you could probably find a lot of is like Google, Olympics, Trump, 
as long as Trump's president. Guns or gun. USA. Uh, you could probably use uh, like Twitter too would be a good one or retweet RT <laughs> or, or Russia today, I suppose. Anyways, uh, continuing along. Uh, I don't think other than, yeah. So the only other thing I've done is added try and accept. And the reason why I did that is if you hit an error in Dash, because Dash is actually running a, a server, the Dash code, for the same reason why you can't print anything here and see it, the Dash code, would all the output is going to that little server, wherever it is. Um, and I don't know how to see that information. So if anybody knows how one could go about seeing that live in your console, let me know. But in the meantime, all I did is just made a little error text file. And all it does is if it does happen to hit an error, it's going to write it to that text file so we know, like, okay, what's going on. So, um, yeah. Now, uh, while the, the Twitter sentiment has been running this entire time, so hopefully I can run this, not hit an error, and we'll be good to go. Let's see what happens. Because I'm actually running this on Python 3.6 this time, and a lot of libs, libs are not on there. Uh, is it going to work? No. Come on. It can't work that well, right? I think it's working, everybody. <laughs> Let's see if it updates, though. I don't see anything updating yet. Maybe I'll change the word. It doesn't appear to be updating. It should, but Olympic might be might be old news at this point. Uh, let's try... Uh, let me just throw in USA. Oh, it just updated. I took it off the screen and it just updated. <laughs> uh, that's okay. We, we should actually be able to see it update live if I change this. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and then pull this up. There it goes. Okay, so now we've got information coming in for USA, and it looks like USA is a little more popularly updated because it's coming in quite quickly here as opposed to Olympics, which makes sense. Yesterday, Olympics was quite popular. Today, yesterday was the last day for the Olympics. Today, it's just kind of like residual stuff, so that's probably part of the issue. Okay, so at this point, we've got, a, okay, a decent app is forming, um, and this is the live sentiment, right? Smoothed out for us and everything. Uh, USA is kind of below average, uh, or below neutral sentiment, but it just popped over into positivity. So that's nice. Uh, and, and yeah, so it's, it's looking okay. Um, our, our UI is kind of ugly at the moment, but we're really, we're pretty far from, from all the functionality that we want. So the, the very next thing that I would want to add is, uh, well, first there's a, quite a few things that I'd want to change. Uh, first of all, our timestamps are really Oh, this is interesting. I didn't know we could actually, I guess, I guess it makes sense, but every time it's going to update. Yeah, I haven't really messed at all with the, these graphs because I keep making live graphs, but yeah, every time you like zoom in, it just updates immediately. I wonder if there's a pause. That's what they really need with live graphs is a, a way for us to pause them. Reset toggle. That should definitely be an option. If, if, if it's an animating graph with an interval, there should be a way. I mean, I know there's definitely a way that we could code it. That should be in there. Anyway, uh, okay. So in the next tutorial, what I'd like us to do, basically the, the main functionality thing that we need to add, uh, but we're going to make a few changes definitely in the next tutorial, uh, is we need this to be dynamic. So we, we ideally, like a little text field right here, kind of like what we do with stocks, where we just we type in the phrase that we want to search this database for and then boom live sentiment for whatever term we want to type in and look for so uh, that's growing quite well so uh, that's what we're going to start working on in the next tutorial and then probably we'll be able to cover some other like little housekeeping items um, including a few things that I've learned uh, one of the viewers pointed out uh, that the graphs can update much, much quicker if you don't animate them like this. Like, it looks nice when it animates over. Uh, but that appears to be very memory hogging. Uh, I don't think plotting 100 plots on a page should be too complex, but maybe, like, shifting 
a hundred plots or something is just too much or something but animating the graphs is very expensive right now for what we're seeing it looks okay but you'll see when we do the live search it appears to be an expensive operation so anyways that's what you guys have to look forward to if you got questions comments concerns or whatever feel free to leave them below otherwise i will see you in the next tutorial